spend a few weeks travelling in an interesting place under our own power and the whole trip just sort of snowballed from this idea. We found out about a windsurfing spot called Jaipakwara from Ocean Source.net and a look at Google Earth showed hundreds of miles of beaches leading up to it, all the way from the city of Natal to the south. So we looked at methods of transport. Harry thought of modifying bikes with fat tyres and then we thought of land yachting and then I saw a video on YouTube of these things called kite buggies that we'd never seen before. We realised this was the most radical and exciting form of transport we could choose. And it's one of the most consistently windy places in the world, so a new lack of wind would never be a problem. But when we realised this was the world's first, and that no one had done this sort of adventure before without support, we got in touch with Craig Hansen, one of the record-breaking team from Kite Buggy in the Sahara Desert. He said we were completely mad, didn't he? But he couldn't see what we could do. Day one. Finally arrived. It's been epic. No, we're mad. <laughs> it's been about 35 kilometers we've done today from a start point. We started off uh, quite gently, a few teething problems. I kept overtaking the kite in my buggy, which meant that the kite crashed and I ran over the lines and got it tangled in the wheels. So there was. I didn't do it once, can we just say? I did it no time. But who was faster generally? With me, because you kept them running out of your kite. Okay. We're really enjoying it now. Sort of dodging people, almost ran over a baby, really. That was cool. The problem is the beach has got really narrow now. And the tide has gone up a lot. We don't have any space to go. It does feel like three days. It feels like, yes, like this morning was ages ago. It has been 12 hours. It's now 7 30 at night. And we left at about 7 30. We were using a uh, 4 meter ozone, so the smallest kites we've got access. access. Um, going to use the frenzies tomorrow because we've had the first day of proper kiting easing into it. Still pretty quick. The buggies have been amazing as well. Um, the big wheels, big, big foot wheels, can just get over anything. So this is Charlie, he's just managed to crash his kite into a cliff, which is not good. Absolutely not good. We have to run about our last three hours, two hours, because it just got dark. Uh, it got, it gets dark about 5.30, yeah. Um, so we've been using our solar caps. Um, that's the only light that we have. Uh, after pitch black, um, we, we see this guy on a motorbike coming towards us, he pulls over, and he's got these two high-vis vests, and he just gives them to us. So we're thinking, okay, that's really almost o overly nice. And about 10 minutes later, he comes back with three guys, and they've got there's two motorbikes. We just thought, oh no. And they were trying to offer to tow us. We got motors on, on the back of the buggy because they thought we'd run out of petrol. And we got really worried. We were, we were discussing how we were going to fend them off and what we were going to give them and how we were going to separate our money because we thought they were going to be waiting for us in the town. I wish they were. I wish they were waiting for us, but they were just waiting for us to have their lights back and their high vis vests back. With their grandma. With their grandma. Show us what the, whole, the whole bloody village was out. <laughs> um, and then they showed us to the side of where we are now, uh, which is quite a good find. We thought we were going to have to sleep out rough tonight yeah. uh, in the hammocks. The wind's far too uh, gusty for us to go through. There's no one around here to help us if anything happens as well. That's Harry there. See if he can walk through. He's now struggling a bit as well. Harry, you touched the bottom! 
Khan. Okay, so this is my brother stuck in a tree. Um, unfortunately, I've managed to crash our kite into it. We've been walking for over nine hours now, and Charlie's just had the brightest idea sitting in my buggy. It's not actually that bad. I've been chucked out of the buggy times now. No, no. Yeah, and it's, it's not a soft landing. It might be sand, but it's pretty scary when it happens. Down there somewhere you can actually see the mark, it's about a foot deep, uh, the mark of the, the face. <laughs> it's what's known in a in slightly nerdy terms as an out of buggy experience or OBE. <laughs> I've had a number of them. <laughs> yeah, just knackered at the moment, really, really tired and thinking, can we actually do this and is it too dangerous? So we've done almost 60 kilometers um, to Balea, but I don't think we've won our race with Louis the Kaiser. Because he cheats, he cuts the corners. We've got to go through all these towns, which is quite nice. So right now we're going to go see if the raft that's going across the final river we got across today is still running. Harry, tell me how it feels to be in Jerry. A bit odd because in anticipation of this event I thought wow that would be amazing we've just covered a thousand kilometers of kiting across the beach to Brazil but thinking about it the uh, actually getting in here was a little bit more dramatic than uh, even I thought. There's no two ways around it I crashed into an electricity pole. Power line. Power line. There was a big bang. Big bang. Big crack. <laughs> As my kite went bang straight into this power line. Uh, the line um, snap the cables of my kite uh, because of sparks huge, everywhere. Huge spark, and uh, the line came down actually for about 300 meters. There's no electricity anywhere. None of the fans are on. None of the lights are on. Uh, anywhere, in any restaurant we just passed. All because of me. I feel quite bad. Very happy, but dirty. I need a shower now. Really it's still dirty because there's no light in the room. So I don't know why there's no electricity in this place. That's it. Thousand k. 